Hello. It's an unfortunate uh, situation that on modern equipment, capacitors are a real problem, surface mount ones especially. Uh, this is a typical example. This is a digital time-based board from a Sony EVS9000E uh, Hi8 video recorder. And these fail frequently with capacitor failure. So it's in a metal can and there are lots of surface mount electrolytic capacitors here. I've replaced one or two of these. Now it's debatable what's the best route to change these. I've been using soldering tweezers and yes they're useful so effectively it's like having two soldering irons so you can get both sides of a capacitor but it can be difficult to get enough heat onto the board. Now another route that a lot of people use is a hot air gun. And yes, that will desolder both sides of a capacitor at once, but there's a very real possibility you'll blow away other components on the board. You look at a board like this, there's a high density of components and you start blowing them off, you're in real trouble. So I don't use a hot air gun. Not very often. Not for this sort of thing. There's a, another solution which is supposed to help, which is a preheater. So what you do is you heat the whole board up to some temperature, say 100 or 120, don't know, something in that area, Celsius. And then the amount of heat that you need to put down onto the board to desolder capacitors should be less. But you can't get too hot because then you'll start desoldering components potentially on the other side of the board or damaging the board, it might delaminate. So you've got to be careful with that. But uh, it's worth a try, isn't it? So you can help me with going through this process. Let's see what's involved in preheating a board and replacing some components. So there may be some experts out there who can uh, provide more information or more experience of doing this sort of desoldering. But I have bought here a preheater. Come on, let's have a look at it. Right, let's uh, unbox this and see what we have. 853A series preheat desoldering station from Banggood. Um, right, first problem. Banggood have a habit of doing this, they supply completely the wrong power cable, so that's a uh, Central European power cable. Um, I mean, it looks decent quality, but uh, it's not what we need here in the UK, is it? Somewhere here I've got a brand new cable. Aha, right, okay, so I'll use that one instead. What do we have? Certificate card. Is that a guarantee? Yes. One year. So there are three items in this series. One is a preheat station, one includes a hot air, and one I think is including a soldering station as well. We've got just the preheat station here. Well, I've briefly looked at that. It's not in terribly good English. In the box we have four screw-on items, an empty packet, perhaps the uh, these were supposed to be in there, I don't know if that's the right way up at the moment, yes I think that's the right way up isn't it? Right, so these fit to the uh, PCB mounts. Something strikes me as odd about this straight away. Looks like the heating unit is to that way, that side. Doesn't appear to be very well centralized. Looking at it all these screws are wonky. It's shifted over there. 
and the metalwork's damaged. So it looks like a bit of uh, impact damage potentially. Oh dear. Maybe they could have uh, designed it a little better so that that wouldn't happen. So I think we're going to have to take the uh, top cover off and straighten this out before we start. Or can I just do these screws up? Maybe just doing the screws up will do it. Now that's not really done it. It's still off to one side. So we're going to have to take the top off, aren't we? And you see the uh, state of the uh, support bolts there. They're all over the place, aren't they? I'm going to have to take the heating element out, I think. No, I can't take the heater element out. I think it's glued in. So I'm just going to have to try to straighten these pillars out as best I can. Maybe I should uh, take the whole assembly off. Now you can see the state of the support pillars. Let's straighten them out now. Right, now can I refit that properly onto the base? Screw holes line up okay. I don't think it's perfect because of the bent metal work, but let's see if that's essentially correct now. Better, but could be better still. I think we're um, close enough. You shouldn't have to repair a brand new product before you use it. It's a bit like buying an Austin Allegro. Okay, that's not perfectly centered, but it's uh, at least all the heater element now is coming through the grill and not heating the um, cabinet work. I'll use my correct power cable. Right, we have set point temperature and an actual temperature readout. So out is set and in is actual. These will do up on a board. I have a gash board which I'll play with, I think. Let's start by just switching it on, see what we get. So our set temperature. And actual temperature. All right, now that's set. Oh, the latch isn't very good on this switch. Oh dear. So actual temperature is in, set temperature is out. But you have to sort of jab it to get it to uh, to latch. If we uh, go for, say, 100, let's see if we can read the actual temperature of this dodgy switch. Right. I can see a little puff of smoke. It's clear it's getting warm. Right, it's got to 100. Display seems a little odd. The ones are brighter than the zero. That would normally imply that they've used one resistor per digit instead of one resistor per segment uh, in the uh, display driver resistors. So that's a bit 
keep nasty, isn't it? Seems to control well. Okay, let's put a gash board on there. Right, this is a board from a scrap camcorder, so I don't need this. But uh, let's pretend that I want to work on these two capacitors here, that I want to replace those. So uh, first difficulty you kind of have very often with this sort of board, I think, is the shape of it. Let's see if we can mount it on here. Of course, one of the problems here is that we have components on the underside as well. And we don't want to... Uh, overheat those. So can these clamps hold this board? They're colliding with connectors and the likes on this side of the board so it's not sitting into the groove. Not on both sides. It kind of sits there on that side but not here because we have connectors. That's awkward. All right, that's reasonably, reasonably secured. Let's get you set up so you can look at this. So if I was using just the soldering tweezers, I'd probably do this. Some solder flux. And then soldering tweezers. Wow, a bit awkward this one, isn't it? You can just about get there. Then try to heat both sides. To release the capacitor. That's not going particularly well. So, let's switch the preheater on. And we'll set 150, I think. And you can see all these surface mount components around here, they're too close. They're too close to the capacitors. If I was to use hot air gun, you know, hot air gun solution, to try to heat this capacitor, I would almost certainly take off some of these other surface mount components. They're very small, I may not even see that they're gone. It's a risk you can't take. So my the preheater is at around about 150 and my soldering tweezers are around about 360 but the other preheat is up to temperature the circuit board most certainly is not so we need to leave that for some time I think we're getting there in terms of temperature now I'll try the soldering tweezers as well as the preheater Okay, one of the capacitors is removed. Try the other one. And there it goes. Okay, so this is the uh, scrap PCB after I've um, gone over the pads with lint-free wipe there. You do have the small concern of one component here, be it capacitor or resistor, that's gone out of alignment. But other than that, this board looks uh, perfectly okay to fit new capacitors in. But it was only a scrap PCB. Now let's do some work with a real one. I 
I was considering working on this digital time base board uh, from uh, Sony EVS 9000. But I've changed my mind because some of those capacitors have been changed already. I'm going to work instead on several panels here from a Panasonic DVC Pro machine and I've featured that in some previous videos. In this particular case well, these machines are notorious for having bad electrolytic capacitors. Some of the boards have already had them changed, but in this case, we've got a little collection here of 4.7 microfarad uh, surface mount capacitors, and every one of those is low value and high ESR. So there's, I think, five of those, but there's lots of surface mount components nearby, so we'll have to be very careful. Physically fitting the board isn't easy. So this is one thing I've really discovered about these clamps they're not great if you've got a plain board you could just drop them on here but if you've got boards with connectors on they tend to foul so uh, they're not a great design from that point of view now this board's obviously way too large to heat up entirely but I just need to work on this area here so I'm going to try to find a way to mount the board in here and I may end up using this knob <laughs> as you know it's, it's supposed to be something you do up to clamp this but I'm probably going to be using it to hold the board in place not ideal is it yeah it's not brilliant but hopefully that'll do so we're going to switch this on so I think 150c uh, is about right um, then of course the solder mount uh, melts at around about 200 or so uh, depending if it's um, lead free or not uh, then the amount of extra heat required to melt the solder is a good deal less than if you're going from a cold board right now again because there's so many components nearby hot air gun would be hazardous so I really don't think hot air gun is much use for desoldering uh, surface mount capacitors we're going to have to go with the soldering tweezers, but with a preheater, hopefully that'll work reasonably well. Let's uh, switch this on. So we have a set point of, what, 150 or thereabouts. So the actual temperature, you press in on this button, but that doesn't work terribly well. Right, so we'll let that warm up. Not till it just gets to temperature, but has been at temperature for sufficiently long that the board is warm as well. So the question next is, uh, well, how do I clean up the board? I can clean up the pads with just a regular soldering iron, and this is what I'll do now. Um, I can't at the moment go over the board with isopropyl alcohol, I don't think, because it's too hot. They're all looking very good anyway. To say it's done a really neat job. The combination of the soldering tweezers and this uh, preheater has done a nice job. For fitting the new components, I'll start with the hardest one to reach, I think, which is this one. Right, that's all the uh, capacitors on this board. I've got uh, plenty more capacitors on some more boards to do. But let's have a look at that uh, 
under a microscope and I'll also clean it up. Well, I've now replaced all of those bad 4.7 microfarad capacitors on this board. I've got about uh, three or four more boards to uh, give a similar treatment to for some other capacitors. So, what can we take away from this? Um, I would say that the preheater helps hugely. It uh, reduces the amount of heat that you have to put in. And so, I've had, I mean, several of those capacitors came off very cleanly. One or two still fought me. But some came off very cleanly with the soldering tweezers. So, in conjunction with soldering tweezers, yes, very good. Uh, I would say also, if you have the kind of board that isn't so heavily populated as this one is, with lots of surface mount components everywhere around your work, you could use a hot air gun. And again, the preheater will help. But in this case, it's just too hazardous and bound to blow some other components off. Now, when it came to resoldering, well, I think it would help again, but my problem was seeing what I was doing. Now, in part, that was because I was trying to uh, leave a camera set up here so that you could see the work I was doing. But also, I was struggling to see what I was doing anyway. Now, I have two uh, microscopes already. I have a proper optical one, a, a stereo zoom microscope. And I've recently bought a USB microscope, which has come in handy for showing you what I've been doing. But neither of those really will help with working on a board like this. What I need is the kind of microscope that has an arm so you can go over the board whilst this is sat on a preheater. The other thing I believe it needs is, as well as an optical output that I can view, you also need a camera which is for the capture. What you can't do, as I've discovered from the USB uh, microscope I have, is solder with a USB microscope because there's some delay between what happens and what you see on the screen. And that makes soldering impossible. Completely unusable for that. So it wasn't a great success, that thing. So I'm going to see what kind of microscope I can invest in that will have a long arm, allow me to look over the board while it's on the preheater. Let me see what I'm doing, but also let you see uh, as a YouTube viewer uh, what's going on. Now, that's the sort of thing, of course, you'd see with uh, you know, videos from the experts like uh, Lewis Rossman. I mean, he is the expert on this. He does uh, surface mount soldering all day and makes it look easy. But, you know, he's extremely skilled at what he's doing. And there I am, something of a novice at this. I've changed oh, hundreds of surface mount capacitors, but I never find it easy. So let's see if some new equipment can help. Uh, some more new equipment. But uh, in the meantime, uh, I would say that was a success. I will work through the rest of boards and see if I can get the uh, DVC Pro machine working. Comments, please down below if you have experience of uh, surface mount soldering where you can um, offer something to me please be polite I had one or two less than polite um, comments regarding the uh, soldering tweezers a while ago and you know they're useful but uh, there's no point blaming me if you don't get on with them. Now, these things I did mention, you know, when I bought them, the, one of the problems can be, I think, that the, oh, they're still switched on, so let's switch it off so I don't burn myself. Uh, the, the precision of the tips on these is not great. Um, they can slop about a little bit. They can sometimes move slightly. So that's a little bit unhelpful. Uh, but, you know, you've got to do this if you don't want to have to try to use two soldering irons and there are people out there who say they do everything with hot air guns well that may be true of certain circuit boards but not here something else i've recently taken to using uh, are these so rather than cotton buds for cleaning the board i'll soak one of these in isopropyl alcohol and go around the board and these are lint free uh, so they do a better job okay they cost a bit more but they do a better job and the other thing I've invested in, which I have uh, demonstrated or briefly shown on a previous video about digital compact cassette repair, 
was a ultrasonic tank but you would need a very large ultrasonic tank to be able to clean the board this size and it's not big enough for this so uh, that does leave the problem of cleaning boards of this type but smaller boards I can put into that is a three litre ultrasonic tank um, and you probably don't want to put three litres of uh, solvent in there. The way I've set it up is I've got the solvent in a bag and then that goes, a resealable bag, and then that goes in the water. Uh, so there's PCB cleaning solvent. And that really does a very good job for small circuit boards. OK, please remember to like, share and especially subscribe. And I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.